morning. Uh, we're getting a new look, a revealing look inside the Biden administration. Author Chris Whipple is out with a new book entitled The Fight of His Life, Inside Joe Biden's White House, taking readers behind the scenes of President Biden's first two years in office. Among the revelations is that President Biden, quote, felt let down by his briefers regarding the withdrawal from Afghanistan. And author Chris Whipple joins us now. He's also an Emmy award-winning documentary filmmaker. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's go Good in order here. Uh, because uh, <clears throat> among the revelations that we learn about in this book is how a high-ranking Trump White House official worked secretly with Joe Biden's transition team to ensure the orderly transfer of power. What was the drama surrounding that? Yeah, you know, Mika, I spent <clears throat> two years talking to almost all of Joe Biden's inner circle, and it turns out that there was more drama behind the scenes of this presidency than anybody knew. And in the transition, it was a really a remarkable story that hadn't been told before. It really was closer than anybody thought, the transition of power. It mm. came down to one deputy chief of staff who was in the Trump White House, who carried out a sub rosa operation, uh, keeping the wheels of the transition turning under Trump's nose and without his knowledge. And it's a terrific story. Wow. And also another uh, revelation in the book is about uh, Joe Manchin and how the orchestration of Joe Biden's legislative agenda and, and, and what role uh, coordinating Joe Manchin played in all of this. Tell us. Well, about yeah, it. you know, this was um, portrayed. This is the this, of course, was the Inflation Reduction Act, which really revived uh, Joe Biden's presidency. Uh, during the during the second year, and it was portrayed as a kind of out of left field freelance operation by Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer. The truth is that it was abetted, if not orchestrated, by the Biden White House. They worked very closely with Manchin and Schumer, and they were they were in it on all the details. So it's it's an example of how you know I really see this as a tale of two presidencies: the first year defined by the Afghanistan fiasco, the second year defined by. But Joe Biden rallying the Western world to face down Vladimir Putin in Ukraine. But it but it led to a series of legislative successes capped off, of course, by the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, and as a result, Joe Biden really heads into his third year with the wind at his back. So uh, this one I'm very curious about. It sort of builds on uh, the Washington Post, Carol Lennig and, and other of the brilliant reporters there uh, reporting and, and book that she wrote about the Secret Service. And you write about how Joe Biden <clears throat> doesn't trust his detail and can't speak comfortably around them. You know, it turns out that Joe Biden's relationship with his, some of his ser Secret Service detail is fraught. And I think it's really mm -hmm. alarming. It turns out, I mean, Biden had a very good relationship with his Secret Service detail as vice president. And during the transition, uh, when he became president, it, it became a much larger group. Some of them, he felt, were MAGA sympathizers. Now, maybe that shouldn't be surprising when you consider that law enforcement, members of law enforcement are often deeply conservative. But a president ought to have the right not only to be defended by the Secret Service, but also to have them keep his secrets. And Biden wasn't sure that would be the case. And uh, and it's, I think, something that's that's very troubling. So, Chris, congrats on the book. Some of the, Thanks, the new headlines here, of course, come from, as you just hinted, uh, the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan, which was a low watermark for the this administration and sort of started the slide that took them some months to get out of, which they, yeah. did, which they did reverse. Tell us some of the new things you found. Well, what I found, among other things, is that there was a lot of drama behind the scenes uh, during the evacuation, during the botched evacuation. Tony Blinken told me, in no uncertain terms, that they relied on a fatally flawed intelligence assessment that they had 18 months mm. to do this. That was news to Bill Burns, the CIA director, when I sat down with him and talked to him about it. And he said, look, we were clear eyed about the fragility of the Afghan armed forces. And we thought it could all collapse quickly if you pulled out the military and the contractors. So there was quite a bit of uh, <clears throat> finger pointing, especially in the aftermath. But give us a quick sense here, though. You mentioned things turn around with his leadership about Ukraine. And that was based on, in part, intelligence that was correct. They knew Putin was going in. They knew he was going in. Fe February 24, 2022 was the turning point of this presidency, in my view. 
Uh, Joe Biden was uniquely qualified to rally the Western world, to face down Putin and defend Ukraine. But it was a lot closer than we knew. The, and I tell the untold story of how Kamala Harris met privately with Zelensky on the eve of the invasion. And she told him, not only are the Russians coming for Ukraine, they're coming for you and your family personally. He was still skeptical. Uh, and she turned to an aide as she left that meeting and she said, I wonder if that's the last time we see him alive again. Well, Chris, uh, this is Gene Robinson. Um, uh, speaking of Vice President Harris, what have you learned about the relationship between President Biden and Vice President Harris? President Vice President relations can sometimes be complicated uh, yeah. and sometimes <clears throat> um, sometimes be extremely <clears throat> fruitful. Uh, what have you learned about that? It's a fascinating, complicated relationship, as you suggested. Uh, during the early days, there's no question about it that Joe Biden felt a real bond with her. Uh, they were thrown together by COVID, uh, spent a lot of times in meetings together. Biden valued her input. And as I just suggested, he gave her very important uh, national security responsibilities. But as things got tough for her, particularly after the trip to Guatemala, uh, you know, she was given the port a difficult portfolio, the Northern Triangle, voting rights. It got back to Biden that allies... Well, they were complaining publicly that this was mission impossible. Her portfolio was unfair, setting her up for failure. But really annoyed Joe Biden was when he heard that the second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, was complaining around town to people about that. And that didn't sit well with the president. So it's a fascinating, complicated relationship. All right. The new book is The Fight of His Life Inside Joe Biden's White House. Chris Whipple, thank you so much for thank sharing you. the book with us this morning. And Eugene